I constantly felt like I was going to fail. I didn't know there was a difference between mechanical and mechatronics engineering. Plus, we got COVID, so we couldn't really do anything anyways. So I just finished my first year at the University of Waterloo. What did I learn? Uh, I might not remember what I learned, but I do know that I met a lot of good people. I tried learning a lot of new things. I had my ups and I had my downs, like a lot of downs. And now I'm going to tell you about what I learned in my first year of Waterloo Mechanical Engineering. Spoiler alert, it's not a lot. <laughs> Number one, I should have done my research. If you're new here, I've been very clear about how little research I did coming into Waterloo. I did my AIF in only two days because I didn't even consider Waterloo an option. I didn't know there was a difference between mechanical and mechatronics engineering. I thought they were the same program. They both have mech in them. I filled in my residence preference sheet based on a friend's because I didn't think it was gonna be a big deal. I was fucking wrong. I then spent the next eight months of my life in an overpriced little box, which definitely contributed to my gradual loss of sanity. I regret how little research I did going into university, and then how little research I did about the university that I got into. That being said, I'm actually kind of grateful for how things turned out. Going to Waterloo made me step outside of my comfort zone and move to another province. Oh my fucking god, there, there are people here now. This happens every time, every time. I literally can't have peace. Yo. Going into mechanical engineering, let me meet some really interesting people. Even living in a prison cell was kind of great because I was connected to a building with my friends. We were pretty much able to like fuck around and have fun whenever we wanted to. That being said, I really wish I did some research. Number two, it's not the end of the world if you're stupid. Probably like a lot of you watching, I didn't have to try hard to do well in high school. I would spend my time doing other things like leadership events, video games, and bad haircuts. Going to Waterloo woke me up to how smart people can actually be. Every person you meet is a new kind of impressive, whether that's academically, experience-wise, skillfully. Literally every single person I've met, I've thought to myself, damn, I wish I could do that. So many times along the way, I got hit with the realization that I'm not as smart as I thought I was. Now, coming in, I didn't think I was that smart. I only did well in high school. I wasn't like a genius. I knew that I wasn't the smartest. But holy sh**, people here are a different breed. I remember FaceTiming my parents worried that I wouldn't pass the semester. I had one of my good friends straight up tell me that I didn't present myself as intelligent, which was pretty f***ing accurate. Could I go into this? I'm literally never gonna be found. He was right. I would complain all the time about tests, exams, assignments, not being able to understand concepts in class, falling behind consistently. So him telling me that I didn't present myself intelligent was kind of eye-opening because I knew that was the case, but I never really thought about it. I constantly felt like I was going to fail. Despite that feeling, I passed my first semester with a 3.7 GPA and my second with a 3.8. Honestly, university academics aren't too different from high school. The subjects are just more advanced. Number three. Co-op isn't guaranteed, so prepare well. After doing my minimal research, I was under the impression that co-op was going to be free. I was wrong, but that was mostly due to my lack of experience. Here's some co-op advice I'd give to my past self. Number one is work on side projects. I was so worried academically that I wouldn't pass that I ended up neglecting my side projects and other skills. That was a mistake. These side projects could be anything from joining a design team and helping them with work or working on your modeling or building or technical skills, anything of the sort. Really, it's, it's anything you can put on a resume and you can talk about in an interview. Next is to not be picky about your co-op applications. This mostly depends person to person. I know a few people who were really picky and only applied to a set amount of jobs, but that was mostly because they were really impressive candidates. If you're like me, your resume is not impressive. Early on, I didn't apply to co-op jobs that I didn't think I'd get into or jobs that I was on the edge about. If you're not a demon with a shit ton of experience, applying to co-op jobs ends up kind of being a numbers game. You kind of just throw what you can in and pray. I think in total, I applied to maybe 230 applications. Lastly, the Waterloo Works co-op support isn't bad, but it's kind of useless if you're in engineering. 
the staff don't really provide any valuable support relating to your field, especially if you're in engineering. Now that's not at the fault of the people working there, it's mostly because they're not in engineering. The interview practice appointments and resume help are pretty useless. The advice they give you is similar to that of like generalized YouTube videos you can find online, so not really helpful. However, if you're in a tough spot, they do provide other programs or like co-op applications you can apply to that aren't really relevant to your field, but they do provide you with a co-op credit, so it's better than nothing. Most of it is irrelevant to engineering though, so it's not that great. Now, if you're in a small percentage of people who are actually coming into Mech Eng and who actually give a shit about the courses I went through, this is for you. Dead. Dumbass. Here are my courses from level of difficulty, easiest to hardest. I had four main courses this semester and one elective, but I'm not gonna include the elective in my rankings. So the easiest course I had was ME 101 or Intro to Mech Eng 2. I don't know why I struggled. This course was split into two components, 50% programming and 50% design. The programming component consisted mostly of C++, Lego EV3 robots and robot C coding with a little bit of MATLAB at the end. We had one assignment every week and it was essentially done during lab time and due the next day. So it didn't take up that much time and they were worth pretty much nothing. Although they were pretty fundamental in building up the required programming skills. So you couldn't really ignore them despite them being worth so little. The main assessment of the programming component ended up being the exams with them totaling 37 of the 50%. There was also a programming project at the end where you had to program a LEGO EV3 robot to complete a task based on criteria. But once again, that wasn't worth that much. The design component was pretty free. Assignments would come out every two weeks or so, and they were pretty easy to go through. However, the main assessment ended up being a final project where you had to design and create a product using the engineering process you were taught. Throughout the term, you'd have two design team meetings with TAs and then one final presentation. Oh, and a report. Now this was done entirely online for our term, so we weren't allowed to create an actual physical product. So ours ended up mostly being based on verification, the actual modeling of products. Plus we got COVID, so we couldn't really do anything anyways. No way, do you actually have COVID? No way. No, no. <laughs> That's a line? Yeah. No way. No way. The second easiest course, ME115 or Materials. This course was boring. I'd say the only real assessment you go through is the labs and exam. It talked about how materials interact with their environment, their composition, their application. I'm literally falling asleep just talking about it. The assessments are pretty much only through labs and exams. You have four labs and two major exams. Despite this course being one of the easiest courses, it's actually my lowest grade in my technical courses. The assessment ends up mostly being random memorization of facts and problem solving that's similar to chemistry, which I suck at. Also, every lab my group handed in was handed in within the last minute of it being due. So maybe that had something to do with it. ME 123, Electrical Engineering for Mechanical Engineers. This course focuses mostly on circuitry and electrical engineering. It was really interesting, but ended up being probably the hardest course. That being said, you get marked mostly on your work when it comes to exams. So as long as you show your work, you're fine. It was my hardest course, but it ended up being one of the most enjoyable and my highest grade. Plus our professor was kind of goaded, so it was a really good time. Lastly, Math 118 or Calculus 2. Once again, this isn't the hardest course, but compared to how high of a grade I got in ME 123, this course is definitely harder to get a higher grade on. Honestly, I don't even know what to say about it. It's your typical Calculus 2 course, you know, like divergence, convergence. I literally don't remember anything. And my last course was BET 100. Um, I got a 78 on it. It was my lowest mark. I thought it was gonna be a free course and I was wrong. Listen to me now, do not take BET 100. They give you like five major assignments, most worth like 20%, and then they get a TA to mark it, which it's super subjective because it's business. At me saying that though, like it wasn't a terrible course. The approach they took and the things they teach are actually of value. It's not your typical business course, but the marking is bullshit. I'm rioting. I'm just kidding, I'm not gonna do that. Don't, don't tell them I said that. So that's it for my first year at Waterloo. If that wasn't enough context for my courses, here's my schedule for one of the days in my second semester. Honestly, because everything was in person now, there was a lot less time to do homework. So I didn't do a lot of homework. Yeah, thanks for watching. Uh, leave a like, subscribe, please subscribe. Oh my god, the spin! Oh!